Professor Evelyn Ansa to give us the opening prayer. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our Master, it is indeed you who has given us the breath we have today, the health and the strength that we have today, and we thank you. It is in you that we live and move and have our being. We invite you, O oh Lord our God, to preside over our congregation this morning. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, and indeed everything that we do be acceptable in your sight as you order our steps. We thank you for honoring us with your presence in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Shall we please be seated? Kindly take your seat. Ex Excellency Nana Dudanko Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Osei Aduchum, the Regional Minister, Honorable Dr. Achibald Lecha, members of Parliament present. The Chairman of the University Council, His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulam Doche, Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Ziato, Pro Vice Chancellor, former Vice Chancellors of this great university, former Pro Vice Chancellor of this university, Tobio Mamao, President of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, former registrars, registrars from sister universities members of convocation, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished invited guests and media, you are warmly welcome to the University of Health and Allied Sciences. This is the city auditorium of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, and this is our special congregation to honor the first gentleman of the land. Without much ado, I shall invite His Lordship, Justice Victor Jones Maulam Doche, to constitute this special congregation and welcome us. Thank you, Registrar. While standing on the existing protocols established by the Registrar, I wish to specifically mention His Excellency Nana Adodanko Akufado, President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, the Honorable Deputy Minister representing the Minister of Education, Honorable Regional Minister Dr. Achibor Lecha, Members of Parliament, Members of Council, Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Aziato, Municipal Chief Executive Honorable Divine Boson, Senior Management of UHAS, former Vice Chancellors, Professors Fred Binka and John Ousu Japon, former Registrars of UHAS and Registrars of other universities, Togwe Teprohodo, the fourth Paramount Chief of Afuega Traditional Area and President of the Volta Region House of Chiefs, Togbeo Mamao, members of Convocation, distinguished invited guests, the media, Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the University Council and in my capacity as Chairman of Council, I welcome all of you to this special congregation. Your Excellency, Nana Rodan Kwakufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, I extend a very special welcome to you to this ceremony to confer on you an honorary Doctor of Science degree, Honoris Causa. The last time Your Excellency, the President of Osea, was during the investiture and induction of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lydia Aziato, and the Registrar, Ms. Ya Amankwa Opuni, on August 11, 2022. Earlier, on July 15, 2022, you joined us at the Grand Daba to celebrate the 10th anniversary of this university. 
On September 1, 2020, you cut sword for construction work to resume on the Sokode Titrinu bypass within the whole municipality. Again, on September 11, 2021, you cut sword for the commencement of work on the second phase of the Chinese project, which has been completed and will be commissioned shortly. This shows your personal interest and dedication in the development and affairs of this university. In all this, this will be your sixth visit during your tenure to this campus. We are very grateful. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, UAS was established by University of Health and Allied Sciences Act 2011, Act 828, during the tenure of our late president, Professor J.E.A. E. Mills, as a preeminent research and practically oriented health educational institution dedicated solely to training health professionals and to engage in community service. I note with great pride and excitement that the aims and objectives in the constitutive acts of the university have been successively pursued with admiration. This undoubtedly is my last speech at a congregation of, his, of you has because my tenure lapses on the 31st of July this month. Your Excellency, <laughs> Your Excellency, the university currently runs 22 undergraduate programs within 35 departments in seven schools. You have also runs 14 postgraduate programs. From a humble beginning of 154 students in 2012, the current student population is 8,240. <laughs> you has, has cumulatively produced 8,915 health professionals who are providing quality health care to Ghana's population since its first graduation on July 23, 2016 with 171 graduates on that day. We are determined to be the desired destination for training of health professionals in Ghana. These achievements are through the hardworking faculty and staff who are comparable to the best you can have around the world. I say I equal to the faculty and staff of the various schools and directories of this university. UHAS is determined to be a star in tertiary education, and your constant interest in us gives us the zeal and commitment to pursue this agenda to train health professionals for the country and beyond. Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers Togbeo Mamao, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. UHAS is grateful to the chiefs and people of Sokade who are our landlords on this main campus. Their support, understanding, and assistance has been phenomenal. We also appreciate the chiefs and people of Adakulu Kojobi, our nearest neighbors, who have been of immense support as well. Finally, we cannot forget the chiefs and people of Ho and Asogli, traditional area for their immense assistance from the formative years of UHAS to date, especially their support to the university on the Dave and Trafalgar campuses. We have lived peacefully with all these traditional areas, and this has facilitated the early completion of the China Phase II project on schedule. In line and in tune with our protocols, we indeed invited all the traditional, er traditional area chiefs to this function. UHAS is grateful for the collaboration between the government of Ghana and the People's Republic of China, which has brought this young university very far. Your Excellency, your efforts at expanding infrastructure in UHAS are laudable and commendable and a testament to the government's commitment to education and the health sector and the well-being of its citizens. We acknowledge successive government's dedication to the development of this university to make it a center of excellence. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the University of Health and Allied Sciences is living up to her mission and vision by equipping students with relevant skills and knowledge in their various fields of study, providing congenial environment and facilities to aid teaching and learning. 
We are also grateful to the National Information Society Agency of the Republic of Korea, the Government of Ghana, especially the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization, for establishing an Information Access Center, IAC, a multifunctional e-library with audiovisual facilities and assistive technologies for the visually and hearing challenged persons. It is the university's commitment to produce world-class graduates who will fit into every working environment in the health sector and be versatile enough to adapt to new challenges in the areas that are very important to bring out the best in the health professionals we are training. UHAS will continue to provide an academic environment in which students develop and attain the highest standards of clinical competency and skills, integrity, ethical relationships, and professional etiquette necessary for healthcare delivery in line with global standards. Bank of Ghana City Auditorium, where we are seated now. When the new University Council for UHAS, which I chaired, was sworn into office and inaugurated in July 2017, one of my first assignments was to see to the completion of the CD Auditorium. The Vice Chancellor at the time, Professor John Japon, drew my attention to the fact that there was a pending congregation and the auditorium had to be completed for use as the venue of this congregation. However, due to rising costs of building materials, the cost of the project had risen whilst the project plans had been exhausted. This was a Bank of Ghana-sponsored project, and I had to quickly intervene by seeking support of government. Dr. Ernest Addison, the new governor, came to our aid, and the bank did not hesitate to provide the necessary funding to complete the project for use in the 2017 congregation. The Bank of Ghana also agreed that we named the auditorium as the city auditorium in appreciation of their assistance. We therefore appreciate past and present governance and management staff of the Bank of Ghana. Togbeo Mamao, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. The University Council decided to recognize the President for his exemplary leadership in making education more accessible to Ghanaian families through the free SHS policy which made secondary education free for students in Ghana and lightened the financial burden on parents who would otherwise have been unable to afford their children's education. Also, the prioritization of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM in education in Ghana has witnessed the establishment of several well-equipped STEM-focused senior high schools around the country and the completion of the UHAS China Aid Phase II project expansion through the partnership of the Chinese government. This massive project is a 60 million infrastructure grant, which comprises the central administration of the university, the largest school of nursing and midwifery in West Africa, and a fully equipped state-of-the-art stimulation center. <laughs> the stimulation center, I understand, is the first of its kind in Africa. We are indeed grateful We are also grateful to the government of Ghana for the counterpart funding and facilitation, which was easily provided through the intervention of His Excellency the President. Additionally, additionally, this award is in recognition of the President's personal dedication and interest in the development of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. As a science-focused university, the Council and management recognizes the President's commitment to education in achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 4, SDG 4, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Togbeo Mamao, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Phase 1 of Sokode Titrinu Bypass Dual Carriage Road. Your Excellency, we are pleased to announce that work has resumed on the Phase 1 of the Sokode Titrinu Bypass Dual Carriage Road project which connects the investors to Sokode and Mirage Junction. However, the investors' 5.3-kilometer internal roads, the Central Laboratory Complex, the Fodome Campus near Hofwey for the Fred Newton Binka School of Public Health, which are both get fund projects, are still outstanding. On behalf of Council, I respectfully appeal to Your Excellency 
to facilitate the timely completion of these other projects. I would like to thank the president and his government immensely for their infrastructure support to UHAS. We thank the Chinese construction company, Nantong Xinjiang, for working assiduously to complete the project within the scheduled time. We are grateful to the former Vice Chancellor, Professor John Osu, Japan, and the Works and Fiscal Development Directorate for following up on the requirements of the contract and providing the necessary support to the contractors. To the Ministers of Education, Finance, and Interior, from Honorable Matthew Puku Prempe to the current Minister, Dr. Yao Sei Aduchum, and Mr. Ken Oforieta, we say thank you for your tireless facilitations you have given to the project from beginning to the end. The history of this China Phase II project, which will be commissioned later this afternoon, commenced with information given to the university by Professor Christiana Amuakunwama during a congregation in 2017. One of the two persons who were mandated by the former president, Professor Mills, to facilitate the establishment of UHAS and UNE in Sunyani. The vice chancellor at the time, Professor John Ousu Japan, after sharing this information, promptly verified this and acted upon it promptly. It, however, came to light that it had to be initiated by the relevant ministry and supported by the Minister of Finance in its counterpart funding. This is where the officials of the Ministry of Education, led by the former minister, Honorable Dr. Matthew Puku Prepe, come for special commendation. They acted with dispatch, and the then Minister of Finance, Honorable Ken Oforiata, and his officials also did not hesitate to assist. Special mention must also be made of the current Minister of Education, Honorable Dr. Yao Jose Aduchum and his officials for their relentless support, as well as Professor Kwesi Yanka, then Minister of State for Education. In all, I must state that the former Vice Chancellor, Professor John Japon, was so determined and dedicated in his pursuit of this China Phase II that I doff my hands for him for this significant contribution. I must say that it was the combined efforts of all the above persons and officers that facilitated the successful realization of the dream which led the president, Nanda Adudankwa Kufado, to initial this agreement in China for the project to commence. He did not only end there. The president found time to come and cut the salt on a very rainy day. Thank you, Mr. President. I must emphasize again that any time the going was stopped, the, His Excellency the President intervened swiftly on behalf of you, has. The result is what we are, we are going to see this afternoon at China Phase 2. The current Vice Chancellor, Professor Lydia Asiato, has also been very phenomenal and active in pursuing the completion of the project since he assumed office. The, their joint efforts is what we are all going to witness today. VP, congratulations. Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers, Togbeo, Mamao, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. And now, by the powers vested in me as the Chairman of Council of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, I do hereby declare this special assembly duly constituted. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Chairman of the University Council, for the welcome address. Your Excellency, with your permission, may I invite the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Lydia Ziato, to give us the state of the address of the University. Thank you very much, Madam Registrar. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, 
Chairman of the University Council. Permit me to stand on existing protocols to deliver a brief state of the University of Health and Allied Sciences and a brief on the China Aided Phase II project. Thank you very much. This assembly is a very short one. The assembly is being held in phase part one and part two. We'll be here for just about an hour. I will move to the China ADF phase two project um, where we are going to commission the project. We do not have the facility for an auditorium like this or a facility to project. So chairman, kindly permit me to present a brief on the China ADF phase two project as a prelude to the commissioning after this ceremony. The chairman alluded to the fact that we have 22 undergraduate and 14 postgraduate programs. But for this academic year, we are going to have some new programs added to this number. And we are going to start a six year Doctor of Laboratory Sciences program, an MPhil PhD in Medical Laboratory Sciences, an MPhil Midwifery Free program, Doctor of Psychology program with specializations in clinical psychology, counseling psychology, and neuropsychology. We are going to also going to introduce for this academic year, with the next admission, Bachelor of Health Service Administration, which is a four-year degree program. In addition to that, the School of Pharmacy is going to also introduce MPhil PhD programs in pharmacology, toxicology, among others. Overall, we, are going to, we have currently 8,240. But come 3 August, just around the corner, we're going to have another cohort of students that we call the sandwich students. So if you ask me 5th or 6th August, the statistics will change. We have produced very qualified, excellent quality health professionals across the programs that we have in the university. Now, we have produced 8,915. The statistics here show that the School of Nursing and Midwifery is our largest school and has produced over 4,000 students. The previous slide, if you look at it clearly, again, the School of Nursing and Midwifery has the highest number of students. And therefore, it is no surprise. And therefore, it is no surprise that the China aided phase two, my predecessor, Professor Japon, saw it fit to have the School of Nursing and Midwifery built. And therefore, it is going to have a 2,500 student space for this project that we're going to launch today. In terms of staff overall, for all these over 8,000 students, for programs that are skill-based or professional programs, His Excellency, we have only 878 staff across all the levels, and this is woefully inadequate. This year, we had very few financial clearance, and come 1st August, we'll have just about 20 people assuming office at the University of Health and Life Sciences and that is not enough. So I'm going to ask for more staff towards the end of my presentation. In terms of our students, they are doing very well both in school and extracurricular activities. And some of them have won grand trophies in their debate class. The University of Health and Life Sciences also hosted the first UHAS research conference last year, attracting 71 oral presentations, 61 posters, and participants were from eight countries. Again this year, we hosted a global malaria course, which brought to the university participants from 36 countries. The university's mission, vision, says that we are going to be preeminent in health research. And the brochure gives us a detailed account 
of research projects that are ongoing in the university. And I warmly entreat you all to kindly have a look at the brochure that details these research grants that are running in the university. The University Council has served two terms. Come July 31st, this council will finish its term. Your Excellency, the council has done very well. Since I assumed office August last two years, uh, 2022, the University Council has approved several policies for the university to help us administer or run this university according to the policies of the land of tertiary or higher education. And some of them included the, the quality assurance policy, student financial support policy, staff development policy, among others. The University of Health and Life Sciences has several partnerships across the world. And at the moment, we have about 52 international partnerships in many countries, in Africa, in the US, Canada, and other universities. Right now, we have some partners from South Africa here present in this auditorium. If, uh, where are my South African? Give me a wave. You are most, most, most welcome. You are welcome, and we appreciate the collaboration. Thank you very much. The Korean government helped us with the Information Access Center, and our Honorable Minister of Information and Digitalization came to help us to commission the center. The University of Health and Life Sciences has made its name because of the giant it attracted over the years. Uh, we have very, very astute professors in this university, and several of them have won awards across the globe. And I have in the brochure a number of them listed. We have received a lot from organizations, institutions, and individuals, and we also gave. During the flood uh, that afflicted our region, the university constituents, Utah, Gawa, senior staff, junior staff, everybody brought something into the pot for us to go and show love to the victims. The brochure also detailed several people who have supported us. Um, you can see, I call our university a safari university because our roads are still pending and you see that we are now growing. So we need a lot of support. And I want to acknowledge and thank all those individuals, organizations that have supported us over the period. Your Excellency, two years ago, I made a call appealing to the timely completion of our lab complex. The laboratory complex of UHAS is the largest in the sub-region. And when it's completed, it's going to help us increase the students' numbers, especially for the laboratory-based program like pharmacy and our um, School of Allied Health Sciences, the program that they run, all of them require laboratories. As we speak, the project is just still 72%. And we are asking for support to complete this project. Last year, we had over 13,000 applications to the university, and we could only admit 1,008, which is woefully inadequate. So if we are able to get our infrastructure completed, I'm sure that our student intake would increase. We have a campus in Hohoi at the Podome campus. Last two years, a call was made also. And this one is only 58% complete. The Hohoi campus is our second largest school and the infrastructure is still not completed. Chairman mentioned the overpass, and you can all see as you came in today, that work is ongoing. The internal road, however, 
is yet to be awarded. So what you see, we're all done with that mega IGF to create access road, especially to the China area phase two sites and other places. Your Excellency, Chairman of Council, ladies and gentlemen, come second August, our student population is going to exceed 9,000 because we have new group coming in. The hostels that we have can accommodate just about 2,000. So there are deficits of about 7,000 students scattered in town, in private hostels and in people's homes. The China Area Phase Two project is giving us additional 2,005 spaces. And so, if I make any mistake to even admit a thousand more students come admission, where would a student sleep? As a mother, as a parent, um, The first thing I think about when my child goes to school is where the child will sleep. So this is a very, very urgent need of the university, that we need accommodation for our students. The facility has been built, yes. It's going to be commissioned, yes. But where will the students sleep? The Asogli Hall and the Sokade Hall are not enough for our students. So on this note, I'll take a few minutes to just give a brief on our China-aided China projects of the university. I start by saying, drawing from 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I planted a seed. Paul was talking. Apollos, what said it? But God has been making it grow. And so in 2012, University of Health and Allied Sciences, the seed was planted. My two predecessors, what said it? But God is helping us grow. And so we want to acknowledge successive governments for watering and helping the university to grow from 155, 154 graduating to over 9,000 students. For this short period, producing over 8,000 students, I mean graduates, alumni, is a feat because all our programs are skill-based programs, are professional programs. And so it is difficult to train a doctor, to train a nurse, a midwife, to train a laboratory scientist. And so we thank God for making our university grow. So phase one of the China-aided projects saw to the completion of the school ad administration block and other academic facilities of the School of Basic and Biomedical Sciences. That project gave us a 68-bed capacity student accommodation. By the phase two, there's no student accommodation. That is why I said what I said earlier. The phase one also gave us an eight-unit, two-bedroom staff bungalows. Phase two didn't give us any staff bungalows. And so when the students come in, we need more staff and you also need a place to sleep. So this is a, an overview of the structures of the China-aided phase one project. The chairman's introductory uh, speech gave a rundown of some of the journey of the phase two project, and therefore I don't want to belabor it. However, on the 11th of January, 2019, the Concept notes agreement was signed. And in the picture, you can see my predecessor, Warren the U.S. and my director of works, they signing it. 
the projects promised to give us these structures or these facilities. They promised to give us the central administration of the university, the school of nursing and midwifery, and the simulation lab. And this is the impression of the promise. <laughs> to make this dream happen, a lot of things happened along the line. I'll just draw attention to a few of them. There was a lot of technical site meetings. So we acknowledge the directories of works and fiscal development. The team went to China, led by the former vice chancellor, to make sure that we all agree on what to do, how the building should look like, the facilities inside and all that. They came back. The government gave us 6.2 million CDs as counterpart funding. And our chairman has already thanked the government, but I want to add my voice to your excellency and your government for agreeing to this grant and also providing the part of government to ensure that the work is done. The 6.2 million was supposed to be used for water to the site, road, electricity, internet, the ambience, and all that. And that was in 2019. You all bear with me that the dollar and the CD, they've been dancing some, I don't know which type of dance. And so inflation spot everything. And therefore, um, yeah. My IT people, are you there? That's not my screen. All right, thank you. And so at the end of the day, we need an additional 5.2 million to complete what the what the contract says the government should do for us. So, Your Excellency, the one you gave us was not enough. So. The counterpart funding, according to the contract, is supposed to provide electricity, water, the drains, and everything. On the 10th of September 2021, Your Excellency, you came. You can, you can see the, the umbrella. It was a rainy day. You came and cut the sword. Thank you very much. As part of the process, when the last concrete is casted at the top, the Chinese will have a ceremony. We call it the topping out ceremony. We went to support them to have that. We were lucky to have several groups visiting us. And the National House of Chiefs, I'm sure you cannot see yourself, but the picture down, you are in the public of Rodo. Thank you for coming in. And other people, our alumni, um, several people came to visit us to see the site. And I'm sure that those visits uh, encourage the Chinese to work within the time frame. So towards the end, there were a lot of milestones and deadlines set. And by the grace of God, on the... Uh, on the... 20th to 27th of June, we had a team coming from China to come and inspect what the contractors have done. And they sign off to say what they said they've done, they've done it according to the letter. And that alone was enough. So today, our minister, deputy minister, will sign off the final acceptance certificate when we move to China phase two before the president commissions the government. 
So before a lot of them left, if I say a lot of them, the Chinese um, workers left, there are several training sessions with our team, the ICT team, the works team, the maintenance team, uh, name it. As part of the uh, process, we had to go to China to also select the furnishing, the equipment we needed and all that to make sure that we are happy with it. And I'm sure that when we go there in the afternoon, you'll see the quality of furnishing that they provided for us. Towards the end also, there were several other professional level training. And so we want to thank all those who helped to make sure that we, we can use the equipment. Um, we want to thank you for the effort. At the end, this is what we see. At the end, these are some of the external views that you see when you go there this afternoon. Internally, you see this. Chairman, I want to just show this two-minute video that gives us some view of what we see this afternoon. So what you see now is the School of Nursing and Midwifery Administration. And here comes the simulation center, or the simulation, the UHA simulation center. It's the largest in our sub-region. It comes with a neonatal intensive care unit, a labor ward, pediatric ward. It comes, it comes with two theaters fully finished. It comes with an emergency ward, a surgical ward. It comes with a canteen fully finished. And it also comes with an e-library or computer lab and a library. So this is a labor ward. So if you want to have a baby, please come to UHAS. So the simulation center is the largest in our sub-region. And the equipment, this is the intensive care unit. So after the theater, we send you to intensive care unit. So, so we thank our public affairs directorate for producing this short video for us. And so, to show our appreciation before the chunk or the majority of the workers left, we deemed it right to have some gathering, some dinner, and appreciation ceremony for them. So on the 18th of June, we had this at the China Phase 2 grounds for the Chinese workers who came to Ghana. Now, the handing over is in two stages. The first one is a technical handing over. So our Professor Francis Nuno, uh, now the Deputy Director General of DTEC. Prof, are you somewhere here? Okay. Professor, thank you very much. He came with the Director General acting of DTEC to, for us to sign the technical handing over on the 9th of July, 2024. So, I'm very, very excited, yes, but am I completely excited? Your Excellency, if I can take two minutes to complete my delivery. The huge infrastructure that we have received, we need certain things to make it op operationalization optimal. We need further support to give it the befitting landscape 
that will show the beauty of the building. There was capping on the furniture, and therefore some of the rooms, um, the store rooms and some spaces did not get the needed furniture. We need some tools and equipment to run the facility. We need some vehicles and the hostel and accommodation for staff, which I'll repeat again. I mentioned the staff strength of the university, just a little over 800. The facility we have to make the university use it optimally, we need additional 450 staff. Financial clearance, Your Excellency. I know, I know that uh, if even I don't get the 450, I'll get about half of it. So, I cannot leave here without saying some thank yous. We want to thank the president. It was during your tenure that this facility was signed and delivered, completed. You has Ambilaka called a tie to the People's Republic of China. And I'm sure when I go, we go to the phase two and um, the commissioning, I will say it again. But here, we want to say thank you to the Chinese government. We want to say thank you to the construction company that worked within time, 2021, and now they are done. They've done very, very well. I want to thank the Minister of Education, the Minister of Finance, the, the GTEC, the Volta Regional Minister, our council, the chairman and the members, and one particular lady, Honorable Madam Christine Amwa Konuama, who was the presidential oversight person, advisory person, for the establishment of UHAS and UNER. I want to thank her very much. I want to add my voice to that of the chairman to say thank you to my predecessor, Professor John Japon, the works directorate, the former and the present. The first guy construction company provided the lighting on the street from the runabout to the China Phase 2, and Go Energy provided the lighting from the hostel to China Phase 2. We want to thank these two companies for helping us. We also want to thank Dr. Joseph Sian Ejapon of Dustpong Groups of Companies for helping us to get some track that we use to convey things for the phase two, the ambience, and all that. I'm sure when we go there, you see how beautiful the place is. The Minister of Interior, the Ghana Water Electricity, Ghana Revenue Authority, the military, the police, urban roads, skyways, community water and sanitation, fire service, all of you, you have helped us to ensure that the commissioning is happening today. Indeed, they would have finished their work, but if electricity was not connected. Uh, this weekend, the ECG, they were here throughout. If the water was not done, they wouldn't hand over. So we appreciate all of you for the immense support that you give us. In addition to this, are individuals who came through for us towards the end when we were very, very hot. Because we cannot just have the building in the bush. So we had a lot of support, especially the, um, where are they? Mm, 
Uh -huh. Parks and Gardens. Who? Oh. We want to say thank you. I was looking for you. They gave us a lot of seedlings. Um, we are very, very grateful. The UHAS team, if I say the UHAS team, procurement, public affairs, works, ICT, uh, the schools, the deans, the directors, all of you. We want to thank you very much. Now, before I take my seat, Chairman of Council, Your Excellency, this is my most important slide. Only five, the fingers are five. So I start from the biggest finger, hostel facilities and staff accommodation. This is a very urgent and important need of the university. 2005, the largest simulation center, and we cannot occupy it. That would be very, very sad. So we need support. The current staff is not enough already, and now we are going to increase and roll out. We need financial clearance. If we cannot get the 450, you give us some. We'll be, we'll be happy. No matter what you give us, we'll take it like that. But it should not be zero. Our internal roads are pending, Your Excellency. The lab complex and the Fodome campus are from 2014, 10 years down the line. We need it completed. And vehicles. These are my five requests, most important slide. So because I went to China briefly for a few days, instead of saying thank you, I say she she ni. Thank you. Shall we give a round of applause, another one, to our Vice Chancellor? Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for giving us the state of UHAS as at today. Now we have a music, a musical interlude by the University Choir. UHAS has a choir. They sing like angels. They are made up of Oh, please, Your Excellency, you will hear them. You, you will hear them and you can testify that I'm not lying. They are really, they have angelic voices. They are made up of students and staff of this university.
Thank you very much, University Choir. The Chairman of Council, Your Excellency, Tobio Mamao, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time we are all been waiting for. Before the conferment, I would like to read a citation for the president. Citation, Honorary Doctor of Science, Honorary Scorsa. Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, distinguished diplomat, esteemed peseta in the fields, in the fields of international law and human rights, patriotic leader of Ghana and illustrious son of Africa, known globally as a prominent champion of human rights, rule of law, freedom, justice, and democracy in Ghana, you undertook many important constitutional cases, which among other things safeguarded the independence of the judiciary, the right of the citizen to demonstrate without police permit, and the right of equal access of all political parties to state-owned media. You held numerous positions and served in various capacities in public service, including three terms as Member of Parliament from 1997 to 2008. You also served as Attorney General from 2001 to 2003 and as Minister for Foreign Affairs from 2003 to 2007 under the Kufo-led administration. Your subsequent pursuit of presidency in 2008 and 2012, the professionalism with which you challenged the results in both instances and the dignified manner in which you twice conceded became a lesson in proper statesmanship for all Ghanaians and indeed all Africans and global observers. Your statesmanship culminated in the African Union, the European Union, the United Nations, the United States of America, the Christian Council of Ghana, and the Chief Imam of Ghana, amongst others, applauding you for preserving Ghana's peace and maintaining her stature as the beacon of democracy in Africa. In 2016, the Harmony Foundation honored you with a Mother Teresa Memorial International Award for social justice, for sacrificing political ambition for the sake of national peace and reconciliation, and the National Achievement Award, which you received on behalf of the people of Ghana in 2017 from the Africa-American Institute in recognition of Ghana as a country that represents freedom, democracy, and stability in Africa. Your determination and faith in running again in 2016, which you won, further cemented your global reputation as a leader of uncommon fortitude. Your laudable career in international law and global leadership has earned you many other awards and accolades, too numerous to fully list in the citation. Many foreign governments have also conferred numerous awards on you, including Grand Cross of the National Award of the Ivory Coast, received on 27th May 2017, Grand Cordon of the Order of the Pioneers of Liberia, received on 27th May 2017, Morocco Scholar of the Order of Mohammed, 17 February 2017, Senegal's Grand Cross of the National Order of the Lion, received on 16th May 2017. Ghana's Member of the Order of Excellence on June 11, 2019. Order of the Republic of Serbia, second class on October 10, 2021. And Portugal's Grand Collar of the Order of Prince Henry, received in 2023. In May 2019, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, named you as co-chair and the Prime Minister of Norway 
among the newly appointed Sustainable Development Goals Advocates to raise awareness, inspire greater ambition, and push for faster action on the Sustainable Development Goals. Under your presidency, Ghana has benefited immensely from your drive to raise the bar in education in furtherance to the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. We have witnessed reforms and improvements in all aspects of education, including teacher education, pre-tertiary curriculum, legal, institutional, and regulatory, basic education, decentralization, secondary education, technical and vocational education and training, and tertiary education, school supervision and inspection, institutional and human resource, information, communication, and technology in education, and educational partnerships, among others. Notable among your achievements in this sector are the 2017 Free Senior High School Policy. This policy, ladies and gentlemen, made secondary education free for students in Ghana and lightened the financial burden on parents who would otherwise have been unable to afford their children's education. Combined with the establishment of several STEM-focused senior high schools around the country and your government's facilitation of the expansion of several tertiary institutions, including the University of Health, and allied sciences. It is your interest in prioritizing education reform in meeting the Sustainable Development Goal 4 that has nurtured and special, the special friendship between you and the University of Health and Allied Sciences. During your presidency, Mr. President, your government approved and partnered with the Chinese government in phase two of the expansion of UHAS, a 60 million project that has equipped our university with the largest state of the art simulation center in West Africa. The School of Nursing and Midwifery Complex, the central administration block, thereby increasing the university's capacity by at least 2,500 students. Other universities have preceded you has in conferring honorary doctorate degrees on you, Mr. President. And these are the honorary doctor of law received in May 2016 from the Fort Howard University, South Africa, honorary doctor of human letters in December 2017 from the University of Liberia, honorary doctor of philosophy received in May 2021 from the University of Cape Coast, an honorary doctorate degree received in October 2022 from the University of Sorbonne, Paris, France. Today, July 29, 2024, the University of Health and Allied Sciences is happy to confer on you the honorary Doctor of Science Honoris Causa for your exemplary leadership in making science education more accessible to Ghanaian families through Through the free SHS policy, the prioritization of the STEM education in Ghana, and the completion of the UHAS China aided phase two expansion project. May I humbly, at this juncture, invite the president, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, to step forward for your honor. Please kindly sit down while the president takes the. I will invite you to get up when he stands, please.
Thank you. This is how the certificate reads. University of Health and Allied Sciences Ho. This is to certify that Nana Adodankwa Akufuado has on the 29th day of July 2024 been awarded the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. For, for his immense contribution and meritorious service to health education, giving under our hand, signed Vice Chancellor, signed Chairman of Council, signed Registrar. Thank you. This is the citation, and this is the citation which was read. So the pro vice chancellor and the registrar will present it to you. You can see that. Yeah. Gentlemen, now, now I can receive you upstanding for us to receive the freshest you has graduate. Thank you, thank you. Kindly take your seat. Mr. President, we are happy to note that you have joined the alumnus of this great university. Thank you so much. Before we hear the president, the newly alumnus of Great Giants Rising U has, I invite Mr. Osei Kuranchi and his team upstage to give us an appellation. Thank you. May I kindly invite the Deputy Minister of Education to give us a word before the President speaks. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Doctor, doctor, doctor to the power seven. <laughs> His Excellency Nenado Danko Kufuado, the Chairman of Council, His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulum Doche, the Vice Chancellor, the Regional Minister, Ministers of State, Members of Council, Members of Convocation, senior members and junior members, distinguished traditional rulers, Togbeu Mamao, I'm deeply excited today to pay a glowing tribute to a distinguished leader, a man who has dedicated his life to serving humanity and transforming societies and ensuring that whatever opportunity he gets, his legacies are entrenched. Today, we have witnessed yet another legacy of His Excellency, the President of the Republic, openly celebrated. He has left his mark 
across various sectors of the economy. He is the president that posterity will look upon kindly and remember his great works and great transformations in the area of transportation and roads, touted as the president who has constructed the most kilometers of roads in this country. Many call him the champion of gender issues and the champion of infrastructure, the Agenda 111 president, the president who has put massive investment into our health sector, the president who prioritizes lives and who has said in his iconic statements, I know how to bring back the economy, but I do not know how to bring back lives that are lost. And he noted also that all his policies and initiatives are motivated by the next generation and not the next election. And by this, His Excellency, the President has demonstrated on many occasions when he said, yes, I can manage the resources, the modest resources of the states in such a way that a child of the poor and the child of the rich all must have access to quality education. Some said, no, it is not possible. Some said, even if they had that money, they would never put it in a policy like that. Some, on many occasions, had other names, but he was poised to ensure that the fortunes of this country ought to be transformed through education, an education that everyone will benefit. And he, since 2017, has seen some 5.7 million students who have all benefited from the monumental free SHS and free TVET policies. He's a president that says that every investment that past presidents have put into this economy must be continued and completed. And for which, even the education sector alone, President Nanado Danko Kufuado continued and completed 1,001 infrastructural projects in the education sector. The phase two of the UHAS project, the China aided UHAS project, is testament of this monumental mindset of continuation and legacy building. We have now seen the establishment of what is to be the largest school of nursing and midwifery in the sub region under the leadership, extraordinary leadership of His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give another round of applause to the newly honored president of our land as we welcome my good friend to take it over. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ufoka asembi se Nipa ya adio sa yei Nani oondi insu na yebo Inti yu astu nsa frewa Yebebo abasu ase wendi unyam Na ya ma umoni yo Oh umoni Your Lordship Chairman of the University Council, Tobio Mamao, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to listen to the first gentleman of the land. May I humbly invite the President with a round of applause. And a standing ovation. Thank you very much. May you kindly take your seats. Volta Regional Minister. Minister of Health, the Minister for Railways Development, and the Member of Parliament for Hohoi. <laughs> Deputy Minister for Education, a Member of Parliament for Asin South, the Presidential Advisor on Health, Board Chairperson of SNIT, Municipal Chief Executive the Deputy Chief of Staff at the Office of the President, Municipal Chief Executive for Home Municipal Assembly and other District Chief Executives, the Chairperson and members of the Governing Council of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Vice-Chancellor, Pro-Vice-Chancellor, Registrar, Staff and Students of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. the members of the special congregation, heads of regional security services, Chinese ambassador to Ghana, representatives of the contractor, the regional chairman of the ruling MPP party, the president, of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, Togbeo, Mamao, including the Paramount Chief of Sokode, residents of Ho, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today with gratitude and humility as I receive this honorary Doctor of Science degree from the University of Health and Allied Sciences, UHAS. This latest honor by UHAS is not just a personal accolade, it is also a evidence of the collective efforts and achievements of my administration and indeed of every Ghanaian who has supported my government's dream of helping to build a free, progressive, and prosperous Ghana. In addition to today's recognition, I have been fortunate, as has been already said, to receive several honorary degrees from prestigious institutions here and abroad. These include an honorary Doctor of Law degree from the celebrated University of Voltaire in South Africa, dubbed the Cradle of African Nationalism, which was conferred on me in 2014 before I became president, an honorary doctor of humane letters degree from the University of Liberia in Liberia in my first year in office in 2017, 
an honorary doctor of philosophy, honoris causa degree in educational leadership from the University of Cape Coast in, in 2020, an honorary doctorate, honoris causa degree from one of the most prestigious universities in Europe, the ancient 13th century University of Paris I, Panthéon Sorbonne, popularly known as the Sorbonne in Paris, France, in 2022. And two weeks ago, an honorary doctor of humane letters, honoris causa degree from Valley View University, the first chartered private university in Ghana's history. Each of these honors has been a source of great pride and they have all reinforced my pledge to serving the people of Ghana to the best of my ability. For me, these awards underscore the importance of vision, hard work, and perseverance in the pursuit of national development. As I accept this honorary degree from UHAS, I'm reminded of the many challenges we have overcome and the considerable progress we have made. I'm grateful for the strong support of my ministers and appointees in government, the dedication of our educators and healthcare professionals, and the resilience of the Ghanaian people. Together, we've made remarkable strides in education, healthcare, and national development. Ladies and gentlemen, the decision by the University Council, acknowledges my government's attachment to advancing science and education, making it accessible to all Ghanaian youth. Education is the bedrock of any nation's development, and science education in particular is crucial for promoting innovation and economic growth and for addressing the myriad of contemporary challenges we face as a society. One of the cornerstone initiatives of my administration has been the implementation of the free senior high school policy, which I launched in September 2017 in my first year of office. This policy has been a transformative milestone in our nation's educational journey. By removing financial barriers, we have ensured that over 5.7 million students have had the opportunity to access secondary education, many of whom have been pursuing science courses, with this year recording the highest enrollment number in secondary school in our history. The free SHS policy has not been merely about increasing enrollment numbers. It has also been about providing quality education that equips our young people with the skills and knowledge they need to try, thrive in the modern world. Last year's vaccine results were the best in the history of the examination, with more than 60% of candidates obtaining A1 to C1 in C6 in all core subjects. <clears throat> Furthermore, we have placed a strong emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM subjects, as well as on technical and vocational education, understanding that these fields are critical for our nation's future. Through this policy, we're nurturing the next generation of scientists, engineers, doctors, and innovators who will drive Ghana's development forward. My government's focus on STEM education extends beyond the free SHS policy. We have introduced new curricula that emphasizes practical and experiential learning ensuring that students are not only theoretically proficient, but also capable of applying their knowledge in real-world situations. 
The establishment of STEM high schools across the country is a demonstration of our quest to nurturing future scientists, engineers, and innovators. We've upgraded laboratories, classrooms, and computer facilities to create conducive learning environments for students. Access to modern tools and equipment has animated curiosity and experimentation, cultivating a culture of scientific inquiry. Under the STEM Education Enhancement Program, impressive strides have been made in the establishment of state-of-the-art science laboratories across the nation. The initiative launched in 2019, has seen the construction of 186 new science laboratories in various regions of Ghana. These laboratories are equipped with modern, specialized equipment to facilitate hands-on learning and experimentation. The infrastructure expansion is aligned with government's agenda of sponsoring a culture of scientific inquiry and innovation. We have also invested in teacher training programs to ensure that our educators are well equipped to deliver high quality STEM education. These initiatives are part of a broader strategy to create a robust and educational ecosystem that supports innovation and excellence. By prioritizing STEM education, we're positioning Ghana to complete on the global stage and to harness the transformative power of science and technology for national development. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond education, my administration has made notable strides in healthcare delivery. We understand that a healthy population is essential for national development and we have invested heavily in improving healthcare infrastructure across the country. We have successfully constructed and equipped 10 polyclinics in the central region, located in the Jumaku, Bisiasi, Gumwa, Deurampong, Briwa, Etsisunkwa, Bimpong Eja, Jamra, Mankron, Akunfudi, Akunfi, Nakwa, and Gumwa Potsen. These facilities were completed and commissioned in August 28, marking an exciting step forward in regional healthcare. In the greater Accra region, five polyclinics have been completed and constructed in Ogbojo, in Adentine, Achiama, Botiano, Udumai, and Sege. These were commissioned for use in May 2019, ameliorating healthcare access in the greater Accra region. We com completed a nationwide TB case detection program in August 2018, benefiting 48 facilities with the installation of essential equipment. The major rehabilitation and upgrade of the Tamale Teaching Hospital, phase two, were completed and handed over on 27th February 2019, significantly boosting healthcare delivery in the northern region. We have constructed 10 treatment and holding centers, two of them of those facilities lo located in Laflau and Kita, here in the Volta region. We have also completed the construction of offices for the headquarters and regulatory bodies of the Ministry of Health in January 2019, providing a centralized hub for the ministry's administrative functions. The construction of regional and district hospitals by the Egyptian company Eurojet has been a tremendous success. The WA Regional Hospital was commissioned in August 2019. The Ga East Municipal Hospital in Kwabenya in November 2019. And the Nsoko, Tepa, Trifupraso, and Konongo District Hospitals were, commenced, were commissioned between 2021 and 2022. Salaga Hospital is at 67% completion, awaiting final works, while Seria Hospital, 
the new Ashanti Regional Hospital has been completed and due for commissioning, pending the resolution of a few minor issues. The, the Quiet District Hospital was commissioned in November 2020 and is currently operational, serving the people of Bekwai. The University of Ghana Medical Center Phase Two was commissioned on 24th December 2021, boosting medical research and treatment capabilities. In Sola, Tolo, Sumanya, Buipe, Weta, and Bambo, Bamboy District Hospitals and a polyclinic have been completed and handed over in February 2021. Additionally, 15 chip compounds have been completed and handed over, augmenting, augmenting primary health care across various communities. We have expanded radiotherapy and nuclear medicine services at both Kolebu Teaching Hospital and Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital, enhancing cancer treatment capabilities. In Dodua, Formina, and Kumewu, <coughs> district hospitals and an integrated IT system have been completed and commissioned as of July 2024. The modernization and equipment of selected facilities, including Tetekwashim Memorial Hospital, Chibi District Hospital, and others, have been completed with the Bree and Manpo Hospitals commissioned in November 2023. We have several projects that have been completed and are awaiting commissioning. Public health facilities in the Western region were completed in 20, December 2022. The Bolgatanga Regional Hospital Phase 3 has been completed and will be commissioned by me in the second week of August. And 12 district hospitals in the Eastern Ashanti Ahafu and Greater Accra regions, in Jumapo, Kwabeng, Nkwetia, Edukrum, Atiase, Swami, Drobonso, Sabrunun, Mansun Kwanta, Chidia, Mim, Pong Kantamansu are also all awaiting commissioning. The Urology and Nephrology Center of Excellence at Kolibu Teaching Hospital and various treatment and holding centers are in a similar state. Our ongoing projects, slated for commissioning for, for completion by December 2024, including additional treatment and holding centers in various regions, staff accommodation at Dodua, refreshment, refurbishment of Efian Quanta Research Laboratory, and a pediatric clinic in Weijau by Municipality. We're also constructing a training facility for the National Ambulance Service at Inken Council in the Ashanti region. Moreover, we're working on equipping the Comfort Teaching Hospital, Maternity and Children's Block, and reconstructing and expanding La General Hospital in Labadi. Further, government's determination to improving our healthcare delivery system is evident in the Agenda 111 initiative which is providing 101 standard 100 bed district hospitals with accommodation for doctors and nurses in districts without district hospitals. Six new regional hospitals for each of the six new regions. Rehabilitating the Aquia Quanta Hospital in the Western region. Building one new regional hospital for the Western region and two psychiatric hospitals for two of the three zones of the country, i.e. the middle and north. The entire package at an estimated cost of 1.765 billion United States dollars. Thus far, construction of 86 district hospitals, two regional psychiatric hospitals, and the Western Regional Hospital are ongoing, which are all at various levels of completion. The average completion rate of the 89 ongoing Agenda 1-1 projects is 65%, with work at some of the sites being at 70 to 80% complete. It is noteworthy 
that the construction of these hospitals are being undertaken by indigenous Ghanaian contractors who have provided direct and indirect jobs to Ghanaians. There's an average number of 120 numbers workers on each construction site. And when completed, an average of 549 persons will be employed in a district hospital, 1,343 in a regional hospital, and 947 in each psychiatric hospital. This means that 67,635 people will be employed in the Agenda 111 hospitals. All in all, the Akufuado government since 2017 has spent some 33 billion, 99 million, 30,553 Ghana CDs and 12 pesos <laughs> on, the on the construction of medical infrastructure across the entire country. Excluding the ongoing expenditure of 1.7 billion United States dollars on the Agenda 111 initiative. Our efforts have not been limited to the development of infrastructure alone. My government since 2017 has recruited 202,527 medical personnel. These include 12,132 medical officers, house officers, and specialists. 165,220 diploma and, nurse de and degree nurses and midwives. 8,688 support staff, including administrative managers, cooks, and executive officers. 1,303 pharmacists and pharmacy technicians, 80 medical herbalists, and 13,471 allied professionals and allied health interns. I'm also happy that the national health insurance schemes, which had suffered a serious downturn in, in its operation in the years before I came to office, is now again operating more satisfactorily and is enjoying the confidence of the increasing number of its users. With the number of active members up from 10.6 million in 2016 to 17.9 million at the end of 2023. We have eased dramatically the proceedings to renew the NHIS membership by dialing star 929 hash on any mobile phone network. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the work is far from complete. We are committed to continuing our efforts to improve healthcare delivery across the country. The ultimate goal is to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. This ambitious target is in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and reflects our vision of ensuring that all Ghanaians have access to the health services they need without suffering financial hardship. Good health is a foundation for educational attainment, economic productivity, and overall quality of life. What the Akufuada government has done by ensuring access to health care for all is to lay the groundwork for a brighter, more prosperous future for Ghana. Together, we can achieve this vision. There is one other matter of some importance which I must address, and it is another reason why I'm here today. When I came to cut the sword for phase two of the expansion project on Friday, 10 September 2021, I did so in recognition of the fact that despite the initial infrastructural development bequeathed to the university by the Mills administration, more needed to be done to enable it to deliver more effectively on its mandate. Upon my instruction, the Ministers for Education and Finance 
in collaboration with the management of the university and at the request of the then Vice Chancellor, Professor John Ousu Japan, secured funding of 60 million United States dollars from the Chinese government. The government and the people of the Republic of Ghana extend our warm appreciation to the President, government and people of the People's Republic of China for the continued growth of bilateral relations between our two countries. I acknowledge with gratitude the efforts of the outgoing Chinese ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Lu Kun, his predecessor, the late ambassador, Her Excellency Sun Ba Hong, and the contractors, Nantong Sijian Construction Group, for their great contribution to the significant infrastructural development at the university. Um, I must also commend Ghana's former ambassador to China, Ambassador Edward Watting, for the yeoman's job he did in this regard. The completion of phase two of UHAS will expand the university's capacity to train more health professionals, including doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and other allied health practitioners. This expansion is necessary as it will help bridge the gap between the increasing healthcare needs of our population and the available allied work, skilled workforce. With more facilities and resources, UHAS will be better equipped to provide comprehensive education and practical training, ensuring the graduates are well prepared to meet the challenges of the healthcare sector. The additional facilities will support cutting edge research and innovation, enabling scientists and researchers to explore new frontiers in preventative and healthcare delivery. This progress is vital for the development of locally relevant solutions to health challenges and for positioning Ghana as a leader in health research in Africa. It will be my privilege and pleasure to commission the completion of the UHAS Phase II project after this ceremony, which will encompass, I'm told, the biggest school of nursing, nursery and midwifery in all of West Africa. I'd like to reassure you that the, 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 the other infrastructural developments and equipment that the Vice Chancellor so eloquently requires for the progress of the university will continue to engage the highest attention of the government. and solutions will be found for their delivery. To commemorate this special occasion, I'm pleased to announce a personal donation of 10 desktop, desktop computers and 10 laptops to the university. These devices will help equip the administration of UHAS and support the effective running of the university. It is my hope that this modest contribution will enhance further the university's capacity to provide quality education and services. I must perforce use this occasion to express my profound gratitude to the outgoing chairperson of the University Council, the highly respected former justice of the Supreme Court, Mr. Justice Jones Victor Maulong Doche for the exemplary for the exemplary work he has done in leading this university and its extensive developments over these last six years. We wish him God's blessings and success in all his future undertakings. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate this moment, I also want to take this opportunity to try and inspire you, the students of UHAS, who form the next generation of leaders, educators, scientists, and healthcare professionals. 
The future of our nation depends on you. Your creativity and hard work will shape the Ghana of tomorrow. I encourage you to pursue your dreams with passion and resolve. Embrace the opportunities before you and remember that your contributions are central to our collective progress. Never underestimate the impact you can make. Whether you are in a classroom, a laboratory, a hospital or a community, your efforts can spark innovation, provide healing and drive change. Our nation's success hinges on your commitment to excellence and your willingness to go beyond the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary. As you embark on your respective journeys, know that you have the support of the leadership of our nation and the gratitude of our nation. Your endeavors in education, science, and healthcare will not only fulfill your personal aspirations, but will also contribute to the well-being and advancement of our homeland, Ghana. You are the torchbearers of our future, and with your vision and hard work, we'll continue to build a nation that thrives on knowledge, innovation, and compassion. Let us forge ahead with confidence, knowing that together we can overcome any challenge and achieve greatness. Thank you once again, the University of Health and Allied Services, for this great honor. I am deeply grateful and humbled. May we together continue to advance the frontiers of science and education for the advancement of Mother God. May God bless the University of Health and Allied Sciences and us all. And may God bless our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Danado Dankwa Kufuado, for that excellent remarks. We have noted the promises, and we deeply appreciate your kind gesture, personal gesture of donating to the university 10 laptop computers and 10 desktop computers. I think our president deserves another round of applause. The president has a favorite song. We cannot let this moment go without our choir singing for him his favorite, one of his favorite tunes. University Choir, please, shall we do that shortly for His Excellency? Thank you.
Thank you very much, University Choir. Please don't sit down yet. His Excellency has requested another of his favorite. Please. And this is a danceable tune. So anyone who feels ready to join the president can stand up and join the president dance to this tune. Thank you. University Choir, didn't I tell you that the University Choir has voices like angels? Your Lord Chair, permit me to do some acknowledgments. I might not be able to acknowledge all present, but I will do my best. But everyone here is very important and duly acknowledged. First of all, we acknowledge with pleasure the presence of Our Excellency Dr. Adodankwa Akufu Adu. Thank you, sir. We are most grateful to you for accepting to receive this honor from us. Thank you. We are also grateful to have and acknowledge His Lordship Justice Victor Jones, Maulam Doche, the chairman of the University Council. And this will be the last time our University Council chair will be conducting congregation. We are going to invite him as a special guest anyway. Shall we give it to him again? We acknowledge the presence of the U House Council, some of whom will also not be seen as U House Council members um, again. We thank you so much for joining us today for this program. We thank our deans and directors of the various institutes and schools for your presence. Our Father of the Region and a friend of the university, Honorable Dr. 
Archibald Lecher, the Volta Regional Minister. We are so grateful to you. We appreciate the presence of Honorable Reverend Intim Fodro, Deputy Minister of Education, representing the Minister of Education. We appreciate the presence of Honorable Peter Ameu, Minister of Railways and Development and Member of Parliament for Hohoi. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate Dr. Anthony Insiasari, Presidential Advisor on Health. Doc, we are most grateful. Indeed, we are grateful to all MDCs present. We acknowledge Honorable Botson for your presence. You always join us for our programs. Thank you so very much. We also acknowledge all our chiefs. Tobio Mamao, we can never do without you. We are most grateful to you. We acknowledge the presence of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, the president of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, Honorable Tepre Hodo. Honorable Tepre Hodo was also a member of the first council of this university. We are most grateful to you, sir. We are also grateful to Honorable Okoboy, who has also joined us today. Honorable, thank you so much for coming. Emeritus Professor Fred Newton Binker, our foundation vice chancellor. <laughs> Prof, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge our second gentleman of this university, Professor John Ousu Japon. Thank you so much for coming. We acknowledge my predecessor, Dr. Cynthia Sena Pueblo, and now the Executive Secretary of Vice Chancellors Ghana. Doctor, thank you so much for coming. We acknowledge Professor Francis Nunu, Deputy Director, Ghana Tertiary Education and Commission. We acknowledge the presence of Right Reverend VDK Agbeko, Moderator EP Church. Thank you, sir, for coming. Convocation, we are most grateful to you for coming. All faculty, all staff and students of this great university, you are duly acknowledged. We acknowledge the presence of Professor Christopher Mensah, Pro-Vice Chancellor of whole Technical University, representing your Vice Chancellor. Sir, we thank you for coming. We acknowledge the Regional Commander of Ghana Immigration Service, N.A. Yabua, thank you so much for joining us. The Regional Commander of Ghana National Fire Service, DCFO Joy Ameyebo Eim, thank you so much for joining us today. The Regional Commander of Prisons, DDP Raphael K. Tepe, thank you so much also for joining us. I saw my mother here. Madame Elizabeth Ohini, the board chair of SNIT. Ma'am, we acknowledge you. Thank you so much for coming. We acknowledge the President Ghana Institute of Architects, Architect Foster Akono. Thank you so much for joining us. All clergy present this morning, you are duly acknowledged. I acknowledge the registrar of the university, that's the only republic university of Somenia. She calls herself the Republic University. She's here. Madam, thank you so much for joining us. We acknowledge the presence of the regional chairman and executives of all political parties present. I saw my good friend, Koku, please give us a wave. We appreciate your presence. Thank you so much. We acknowledge all our former deans and directors of this great university. I cannot mention your names, all your names, but you are duly acknowledged. We acknowledge the university choir. Oh my God. I also acknowledge 
all government institutions present, the police, the military, fire service, all of you, we acknowledge staff from GCB. The regional manager, Bank of Ghana, is also here with us. Sir, please, with a wave. Thank you so much. The media, thanks for coming. We acknowledge your work and all you do for us. Tobio Mamao, we acknowledge you so much. There is the, 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 the wives. Thank you, thank you very much. The wives of the vice chancellors, the former vice chancellors we've had, we call them the first ladies of US. Today, in our midst, we have the first gentleman in our midst joining us, the husband of our vice chancellor. Chief, please give us a wave. <laughs> yes, Honorable Okoboy says, you has first gentleman. The planning committee members of this event, we are most, most grateful to you. The ICT team, the works and fiscal development team, and everyone who contributed to make this program a success. I cannot leave but thanking our Chinese partners. I see Mr. Wan, I see Jimmy, I see Tony, and everyone here the Chinese contractors to the Chinese project phase two, we are most, most grateful to you all. Everybody here who joined us today for this special congregation, we say, Akbe, thank you very much. I got so excited, and I don't want this program to end anyway, but we have to. And so I invite His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulom Doche to give us his closing remarks and dissolve the special congregation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't think there will be time for any remarks this morning. We are going for another equally important function. So I'll use my powers for the last time and dissolve the cons uh, congregation. And now by the powers vested in me as the chairman of council of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, I do hereby declare the dissolution of this assembly. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I invite Mr. Nuruddin Isaka to give us the closing prayer. Shall we? Thank you. Shall we pray? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma inna ka afun tu ibu la afwa fwa fu anna. Allahumma inna ka afun tu ibu la afwa fwa fu anna. Allahumma inna ka afun tu ibu la afwa fwa fu anna. Wa tabaraka misluka wa jalas misluka wa la ilaha illa gayruk. A'udhu billahi minas shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunia asana. Wa fi la airat la asana. Wa kinna azab al-nar. Rabbana la tazik kulubana. Bada iz adaitana wa hablana min ladunka rahma. Innaka anta al-wahab. Rabbana innaka jami innaas. Liyoma la rayba fih. Inna allaha la yuliful mi'ad. Rabbana ablana min azwajina. Wazuri yad kurratu ayun. Waja'alna lil mutakina imaman. Rabbana habla ma amatana. Watuba alayna innaka anta sawambu rayim. Allah, we thank you for today. 
Today is a great day. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe. Peace and blessings be upon his name. Peace and blessings be upon the leader Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, you are the forgiver. We ask you for forgiveness and you always forgive us. Continue to listen to our prayer and forgive us our sins. Allah, we thank you for the lives of our president, His Excellency, Dr. The Freshest Alumni, Dr. Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, the University Council of His Chair, His Lordship Jones Maulon Duche, the University Management convocation, and everybody here in Gade, we thank you for your lives. Allah, we ask that as we depart from this ceremony, you give us your travel mercies. You continue to be with us and grant us our heart desires. We thank you for today. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Ikhdina surat al-mustakim, surat al-lazina an'amta alayhim, kairi al-magdubin alayhim wa ladhalin. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Isaka. May I humbly request you to all stand up on your feet for the Yuhas anthem. A few announcements. There are buses waiting outside for us to move us to the Chinese phase two project site for the second phase of our program today, the commissioning.
please remain standing for the recession. We close with a national anthem. we were said.